Come on, guys. Well, good to see you guys. Worshiping the Lord. I pray it's awesome. Yes. Can I get, can I get you to say, say awesome? Awesome. Is God awesome? Awesome. You know, thank you guys, song leaders, for leading us in worshiping an awesome God. You know, we don't serve a dead God, amen? No. You know, if God were dead, what would we be? Dead. <laughs> but since God is alive, what are we doing? Alive. So we serve an active God. Yes. And I lift up my lovely wife for an amazing yeah. community. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that story just moves me. When I heard the story myself, I was yeah. like, yeah. oh no, this, this, this is not good. Mm. This is not good. We've we got to do something about this. But you know, Everyone has a chance and a choice to make themselves. For sure. yeah. but, but as long as you're still alive, you got a chance to make the right choice. Amen. 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 And, and thank you so much, Eldrin, for that, you know, contramunion. Yeah. 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 Contramunion, you know, and that oh. the contramunion that you yeah. gave us right there. It's helping us to really give with, with, a, with a cross on our hearts. <laughs> you know, it's still a cross communion day, you know, contramunion. Yeah. And, and, but before we go any further, let's have a prayer, guys. Amen. Amen. Father Neville, thank you so much for really being an awesome God. Yeah. We know, God, you're not little. We serve a big God. Yeah. And because you are so big, God, we know that everything we do is to be, it's like, it's like it's almost nothing, God. But still, God, you love us so much. Thank you so much, God, for this new opportunity to serve you in a new way. Mm -hmm. To know that when you make things new, you start something new, God. And Lord, I pray from this very space, God, from this very point, God, that you will take your glory throughout this whole neighborhood, God. That the whole of Amsterdam, the whole of the Netherlands, God, that your word will radiate through and that everyone will know about your son, Jesus Christ, God. Amen. I pray that what he did on the cross will not go to waste. That people will not die without knowing you, God. Mm -hmm. I pray you use me today, God. Mm -hmm. Put me aside, God, and let your word come with spirit-filled words, God. Amen. Words that go straight to the very core of every single person here today. Yes, God. That no one leaves here without a chance to repent, God. Yes, that no one leaves here without changing fully, God. Amen. I pray that those who are watching online, those who are watching on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, that you please Bring them up to their knees to say, Jesus Christ is Lord, God. Yeah. I pray that I myself, God, will continue to put you as number one in my heart. And I will never, ever, ever, ever fail you, God. And I will stay with my hand frozen to the sword forever and ever. Amen. I love you, God. In your sons of my prayer, amen. amen. Come on, bro. Turn your Bibles, guys, to the book of Philippians chapter 3. Come on. Let's go. You know, we, we had a great service last week, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you remember my title was, I Want to Know oh, Christ. Christ. Yes. So can you say with me, I Want to Know Christ. Come on. You know, and today I thought a great title would be, I, I Want to Know Christ Part 2. Part two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, you get it? Because I was thinking, well, can you ever stop knowing Christ? No. no. Give like, you know, yesterday I, I knew Christ. <laughs> Today I don't need to know Christ anymore. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, every sermon should be, I want to know Christ. Yeah. Every, every quiet time should be, I want to know Christ. Sure. Every song you sing should be about, I want to know Christ. Amen. Every way you show your video, be like, hey, I want to know Christ. Do you want to know Christ? Yeah. You know, every when we're having lunch or dinner, wow, does this lunch know Christ? <laughs> you know, am, am, am I knowing Christ through this food? Everything I do should be about knowing Christ. Up, it should be like, you know, how does Jesus eat his food? You know, you know that is a fun fact? Jesus was not vegan. Wow. No, he wasn't. he wasn't vegan. That's true. And I was like, and I was so convinced. I was like, oh man, Christ wasn't vegan. Oh. And I'm, and I'm, Chicken drumsticks, bro. Like, and, I'm like, and I'm like, any vegan food right now? I'm like, well, it's like Christ-like. Mm. You, know, you know. And I was like, wow, you know, Christ was not vegan. Oh man. So even my Lord, he even had to eat the lamb also. Oh, oh man. I, I, I gotta, I gotta get back on some meat. Come you know? on, bro. Was, was a preacher from the age of 12. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. Did, did you know about that Christ preached from 12 years old? Yes. Yes. You, you got to the temple, he was laid Fire out. Fire stops. Come on. And I'm like, wow, I pray my children will lay it out from the age of 12 also. Yeah. Come I, I know about come you, on. I pray you don't feel too old to lay it out. Oh. No. I pray you feel like, man, if Christ could preach at 12, I can preach at whatever age, amen? Yes. amen. And then there's so many things 
saw Christ, he just cried. He's like, wow, Christ himself. You know what he did? When he was 12, he put his God above his family right away. Mm. They are 12. Mm. Yes. When he was 12, he was like, you know what? I'm not, I know I'm not 18 yet, like, you know, we're well, 18. I'm not an adult yet. But you know what? I, you know what? My relationship with God is more important than any other relationship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you, well, Christ is so amazing. When you go into the intricacies of who he is, you will fall deeply in love with him. Amen. 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 Last week, we had a why do you want to know Christ, right? Yes. yes. We had three points. We said, you know, the first point was you can't know you without knowing him. Yep. That's our first point last week, right? Yeah. Yes. You guys remember? Yeah. yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you know, and, and the second point we had was. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll swear you guys. You know, your future glory is built upon your present suffering. Ooh. That was our second point last week. And our third point was, you can't live life without dying to your life. Amen. And, and, and so today, we, we, we're going to pick it up from the first chapter we read last time and continue to part two about knowing Christ. Amen. And let's pick it up in chapter three of Philippians in verse 10. Let's go, bro. You know, we're back in the, in, 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 in the times where people were always wondering, did Jesus Christ really exist? <laughs> people, people doubt to today. If Jesus Christ really existed, and I believe that once anyone comes to understand truly and truly that Jesus Christ existed, lives, lived forevermore, and also that he died and rose again, your life will never be the same again. Mm. Come on. You know, the Roman historian Tacitus, he records the events surrounding Emperor Nero in, the, in July 64 AD. And after the fire that destroyed much of Rome, Nero, who was Roman emperor, was blamed for being responsible. But look at what Tacitus wrote down in his, in his report. But to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most exquisite tortures wow. on a class hated for their, abomination, for their abominations called Christians. Wow. Christians were called abominations in the time of, of Nero. Wow. Mm. From whom the name had its origin and they suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of, uh, of their procurators, Pontius Pilate, which you know in the Bible. Yep. Yep. And a most mischievous superstition called Christ. Thus they checked for the moment again and they broke out into all Judea and the first source of the evil, but then even in Rome where all things hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and became popular. Hmm. That, was, that was in 64 AD when a Roman historian recognized that Jesus died, he rose again, and Christianity spread so wildly all around that first century that he changed the world. And even the Roman Empire said, you know what, I'm going to blame my crime on Christians. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but you know, even the first century, Christianity was so spread around that even governors were fighting to put their crimes on Christians. I believe that no one in the 21st century could say he didn't die and rise again. Wow. Yeah, come on. For sure. You know, we got to know who Christ is. Yeah. But sometimes I believe in the, in the world we live in, we don't want to know because we want to focus on what we know right now. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know about you, but history has always been there, right? Yes. Yeah. We got to learn from history. Yeah. We gotta learn that hey, we don't, we're not in this bubble of life. We are in a life that has been ongoing for so long. Come on. So if anyone wants to know if Christ really existed, just look back in time. Yeah, mm -hmm. come on. Just look back in time. So today I want to show you the things about Christ that we should know today. Come on. Philippians 3, in verse 10. Preach, bro. Like it. I want to know Christ. Yes. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold for that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, Forgetting what is behind and straining forward toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Paul 
was like, man, I just want to know Christ. 33 years as a disciple is like, you know what? I want to know Christ. I want to know how is it possible that someone could die and rise again. Mm. And, I, I, and I thought about this question my whole week. I'm like, how do you explain that Christ died and rose again? How do you explain it? How do you, how do you know it? How do you, how do you like, you believe it, but how do you, you know, like, how do you communicate that to someone? Mm. How, how do you, I was like, I want to know. How, how, did, how did this happen? And all my week I've been saying, like, how, how, did he, how did he rise? How? How's that possible? How, how, what made it happen? How? how? The, only, the only thing I could think of was the tomb. I could only think of, let, let me go back to the tomb. Let me go back to, yes, historians believe he died. Yeah. But let me go back to the tomb. On, and see what happened at the tomb. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. And so today I want to talk about the empty tomb. Come on. And, I, and it made me think of if there's a tomb that's empty, I want to ask you, are you living an empty life or a full life? Oh. Hey, okay. Because if the tomb is empty, that means God wants something to be emptied out of your life as well. Mm. Yes. And, and, and if you're living a full life, how come you're living a full life? Is it because of the empty tomb or are you full of sin? Wow. Yeah. The empty tomb. Is the answer. Look at 1 Corinthians 15 in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 in verse 1. You guys with me so far? Yes. yes. Great. 15 in verse 1. You know, uh, Charles Spurgeon said, The resurrection of Christ from the dead is one of the best attested facts on record. Amen. 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 Yeah. Come on. Come on. There were so many witnesses Come on. to behold it. That if we do in the least degree receive the credibility of this man's testimonies, we cannot and dare not doubt that Jesus rose from the dead. Come on. He said, we Christians do not believe that Jesus was the only one that ever rose from the dead. We believe that every death begins in a resurrection. At every grave, the stone is rolled away. In the first Corinthians 15, we see Paul's account of why Jesus and how we can believe that he rose again. In verse 1, now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand by this gospel, you are what? Saved. Saved. And if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in what? Vain. You know, it's pointless to just say I'm a disciple and not hold on. Hmm. Preach. It is pointless to say, you know, I got baptized and I stay in the vine. It's pointless to say, you know, I know Christ and I live like Christ. Hmm. Because you don't know until you live it out. Because in verse 3, for what I received, I passed on to you as a first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So the first thing Paul says is for you to understand how Christ lived, why he died, why he rose again, was to understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to keep us. Who was keep us? Peter. And then to the twelve, who are the twelve? The twelve apostles, the first twelve disciples Jesus called. Mm -hmm. And after that he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers and sisters at the same time. Most of whom were still alive, who still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. You know what the word abnormally born means? It means aborted. Wow. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I have persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. Amen. 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 No, I worked hard than all of them. Yeah, not I, but the grace of God that was with me. You know, Paul makes a, a reciprocation here between hard work and grace. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, I worked hard. See, the more we receive grace, <clears throat> the 
the more work, harder we work. Preach. Yeah, okay. You know, the less you work, that means you've not been in touch with the grace of God. Amen. You know, if you're a dad and man, it's too, it's, it's too, if something is too hard for you, guess what you need? Grace. Yeah. When something is too difficult, be strong in the grace. Amen. When something is like challenging, guess what you need? You don't need to, you don't, you don't need to tell us to reduce. You need grace wow. to go yeah. through the challenge. Amen. I believe we live in a life where everyone wants to reduce the burden, mm -hmm. reduce the challenges, mm -hmm. reduce the hard work. What about saying, you know what? I will go head on, but I got God's grace with me. Come on. You know what grace does? It enables you to say, you know what? Even when I fail, I fail forward. Reach. What grace does, even when I'm tanking, I'm tanking crankingly. Amen. I know that, they got that one for you. You know, even, even, when, even when I'm feeling down, I'm fired up in my downness. Come on, man. Come on. You know, even when I feel unhappy, I'm happy even when I'm unhappy. Yeah. Because you got God's grace yeah. with you. Because you know it's not about your performance, it's about your relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> but Paul here talks about the people we appear to. It's like there's enough evidence for you to see that these people believed that Jesus Christ rose again because what? They saw him. What is my point here? The, the tomb of Christ is still empty to this very day. Yeah. Go to Buddha's tomb. What do you find there? You still find his bones in there. Go to Muhammad's tomb. What do you find there? Muhammad's bones are still there. Go to Confucius' bones. What do you find there? His bones are still there. But go to the tomb of Christ and you will see an empty tomb. Because we know that only when the tomb got emptied can anyone be full. My first point for you today is the fullness and emptiness of your life is determined by the fullness and emptiness of the tomb. The fullness and emptiness of your life is determined by that fullness and emptiness of the tomb. Come on. Because if the tomb is empty, that means something has come out to go somewhere else. Mm. If the tomb is filled, that means nothing can come out to fill anything else. You know, I think about <clears throat> how empty our lives can be. Today, if you're a disciple, you can be encouraged you don't live an empty life. But today, if you're not a disciple, I want to ask you the question. I'm not going to tell you if, you if it's empty or not. I want to ask you the question. Do you feel like you're living a full life or an empty life? You know, we all want to fill our lives with something, right? Yeah. That's why when you wake up in the morning, you feel depressed because you don't have anything to do. If you wake up in the morning and you have no job, no school, no money, no girlfriend, no boyfriend, no father, no mother, let's say you have nothing, you know how you would feel? Empty. You feel useless. You feel like, where's my life going to? You, you wonder if your life is actually achieving what it was meant to do on this earth. But what, else, what, what, what do we then end up doing? Because we know we need to be filled up. You know what we do? We now start taking sin to fill up ourselves. Yeah, come on. You see, when a marriage is not going well, when the wife will say, well, I, I don't feel filled up with love right now. So I'm going to go get my love somewhere else. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When a husband is not feeling respected, you know what's going on? I don't feel, I don't feel like my, my, my respect tank has been filled up right now. <laughs> so let me go and get my respect somewhere else on a woman I can dominate. Yeah. Or you see girls, young girls nowadays, you feel like, well, I don't feel acknowledged enough, you know, in my classroom, in schools, and, you know, Facebook and Instagram. So let me put on dresses that can give me an impure look. Yeah, wow. yeah. You know, this week my wife and I, we, we were just, you know, cycling with the kids on Wednesday morning. We tried to get a time away with, with the kids on Wednesday morning early just to, you know, you know fill their love tank a little bit more. <laughs> and, and we took them to the playground close to uh, Faisalkracht. And there, you know, I was like, well, we're going there, and then I like saw uh, 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 Paradiso. You guys know Paradiso, the club? 
Yes. Yeah. The nightclub party, so where um, uh, above it, it, mean, it says the Freie Gemeinde, which was a church before, and is now a nightclub. Yeah, right. And on the front of this nightclub, we have pictures of all the sexual organs of everything of a human being can imagine. No. You have pictures of different sexual acts. You have pictures of obscene images that you don't want your child to see. No. Images that even adults shouldn't see. Yeah. yeah, come on. But you know what is more sad about these pictures? They were in front of a secondary school. Oh my gosh. My club, pictures there, and right opposite that club is a school. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're, you're dropping into your child at school. Love you, and the first thing the child sees is, wow, interesting. Yeah. yeah. The first school, the first thing they see is like, oh, wow, really? Is that how it should be done? Yeah. Oh, wow. So if I do that, that means I can also, I can also be happy, right? Yeah. We see our world has, has been warped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do we do? We're trying to fill up our emptiness by turning the things that God created for purity to sin. Yeah. Today, if you're a disciple of Jesus, the Bible says in John 10, verse 10, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come to give them life, and life to the full. Amen. The reason why everyone needs Jesus is because everyone needs something to fill them up. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. Who doesn't yeah, want to be filled on. up? Who doesn't want to be filled up? Put your yeah. hands up. Who doesn't want to be filled up? Ah, oh. uh -huh, you see? Everyone wants to get filled up. Yeah. But the question is, what are you drinking? Come <laughs> on. <laughs> what, what are you eating? Drunk on spirit. <laughs> what, 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 are you, what are you feasting your eyes on? Mm -hmm. What are you feasting your heart on? Yes. I believe that our world nowadays needs nothing more than Jesus Christ. Why do I say this? Look at Luke 23. Come on, bro. Come on. Luke 23. <clears throat> the greatest sign we're looking for something, guys, is because when you die, how would your eyes look like? When you die, will your eyes have a look of fulfillment? Or will your eyes have a look of desperation? Wow. wow. When you die, will you look with someone against your eyes and say, wow. I see no fear in his eyes. Mm. I see no doubt in his eyes. I see no, I see no eyes like, well, he's dying, but it doesn't even look like he's dying. Yeah. Mm. He's dying, but he looks satisfied. Wow. You will know if you've lived a full life, if you put yourself in that picture right now, wow. and think about how your eyes will look like on the day you die. Amen. In Luke 23, we see in verse 50. Look Come at the empty on. tomb, guys. Come on, bro. Now, there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to the decision and action. And he came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, rather than linen cloth, and placed it in the tomb, caught in the rock. One in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day and the Sabbath about to begin. You know what's so amazing about Jesus Christ? He never organized his funeral. Hmm. <laughs> he never had plans for a funeral. He never said, hey disciples, take this money, buy a tomb for me before I die. He never said, you know what, where's the best tomb I can lay in? And he all thought about, wow, you know, when I die, let's make plans for you guys. You know why? He never planned to stay dead. Oh. <laughs> he never planned to stay dead. You know, we all plan to stay dead. But Jesus Christ never planned to stay dead. He said, you know what? Don't even worry about me. I'll, I'll borrow a tomb and I'll give the tomb back to him. Wow. <laughs> I'll borrow a tomb. Just give me three days in that tomb and I'll change the world upside down. Wow. Yeah. Three days. And that's enough for me. Yes. Come on. Wow. In three years, Jesus Christ cried the whole world in three years' ministry. Mm. And in three days, he brought salvation wow. to the whole world. Yeah. You know why? Because any true disciple doesn't even need to plan his death. It's not about what, what happens when you die. 
So that's what happens after you die. Yes. Amen. Yes, definitely. But anyone who is just thinking about when I die, I'm dead, then you can plan a tomb for all you want. But disciples, they plan a life after death. You know, even Jesus Christ didn't even think about a tomb. Let me ask you a question. Would you like to die like Jesus? I, I feel like, man, there's no better way to die. <laughs> to die knowing I'm going to rise again. You know, you, you wouldn't even care about how much the tomb costs. You wouldn't care about the caskets. You wouldn't care about anything else. You would care about how much the life after costs. Yeah. yeah. Come on, man. Today, if you're not a disciple, I'm going to challenge you. Mm. Look at your life and ask yourself, is it full or is it empty? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. And if you say it's full, next question, is it full of God? Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. If it's not full of God, then what is it full of? Is it full of sin? If it's full of sin, okay, fine. How are you happy? Mm. You're not happy? Okay, fine. Are you depressed right now? If you're depressed, why are you depressed? Because you actually don't want Jesus to be real in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, if Jesus is real in your life, you know what happens? That means it's not in the tomb anymore. But I believe some people want Jesus to stay in the tomb. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some want to believe, no, he's dead in the tomb. Because they want to fill their lives up with sins. Mm -hmm. Come on. So they want to give you a challenge. That nightclub called Paradiso, right? Mm -hmm. You know what it means? Paradise mm -hmm. in, in English. You have two types of paradise. Yeah. Paradise of sin. Mm. Or paradise of the Son Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what paradise do you want? Come on, babe. Let's keep on reading there. It says in verse in verse 42, they gave they, they gave him a piece of fish. Sorry, let me see. Sorry, verse 55. Mm. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. They went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on Sabbath in obedience to the commandments. Amen. 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 On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their face to the ground. But the man said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Amen. Wow. He is not here. He is risen. Remember how we told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners. Come on. Be crucified, and the third day he be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, that they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. Let's pause right there for a second. Who were the people who told to all the brothers? They were sisters who first saw Jesus Christ. Yes. Come on, sisters. Come on, sisters. You know, you know how amazing it is to be the first one to see Jesus yeah. after rising. Wow. Wow. Privilege. You know, I want to encourage the sisters today, guys. Come on, Come on sisters. It is time for the sisters to really see Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Come on. Not see each other. Woo. Preach. Because sisters, you can see each other too much. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, sisters. You gotta see Jesus. Yeah. Because when you see Jesus, you see who you are and you see your sisters. Amen. And, and, and sisters, look at what happens after they saw Jesus. Look at what they did. They went and they did what? They shared their faith. Wow. In verse 10, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, and the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman. Say, woman, don't, don't worry. They won't believe sometimes. Because their words seem to be like nonsense. Don't worry about that. You still saw, you still know what you saw. Peter, however, you see, there's only one person who will believe what you said. Peter, one brother, got up, ran to the tomb, bending over the other strips of linen, lying by, by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. That's the question today what happened? Mm. Who moved the tomb? Who moved that stone? Who moved the stone away for Christ to rise out again? Only one person can move the stone. God himself. Amen. 
because no other man could move that stone. So they want to challenge you. Bring your empty life to the fullness of Christ. Wow. Today you might be listening to me with one ear. I pray you open that one ear properly. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, might, you might be distracted by something else. I pray that your, 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 that one ear at least you have is open to see your life will never ever get better unless you give God all your heart Amen. and let Him fill you up. Because what do you have to lose? Mm. So true. Will your life be more fulfilled because you, have, you don't have Jesus? What do you have to lose? Yeah, come on. What, what, just tell me. I don't, someone can tell me what the cost of not being a disciple? Everything. Mm. We're talking about that life, right? Being empty or full. Let's look at a great scripture in Genesis 3. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on Why are we so struggling with emptiness and fulfillment? Come on, come on. Thank you, bro. I pray today that you, 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 you're inspired to fill your lives with Christ. Come on. Yeah. Genesis 3 and verse 12. After the man blamed the, the, the woman. Mm. Don't worry, babe. <laughs> I, will, I, will not, I will try not to blame you all the time. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll, just take, I'll just take that for myself all the time. So. Look at what happened in verse 12. Genesis 3 and verse 12. The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord said to the woman, what, what is this you have done? You know, when, you know, when, when the sister gets a question from God, it's like, <laughs> the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock. And all wild animals, Yo, you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust in all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. And it will crush your head and you will strike his heel. It says he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. What is this going? This is one of the prophecies mm. about how Jesus Christ will come through the woman. Mm. And he, it says he, will crush your head. Who is the he? Jesus mm -hmm. will crush the head of Satan. Yeah. Come on. But first of all, there's a curse here. Life will not be easy anymore. You might be wondering why life is so hard. Well, that's because, because of the sin in the world. But you know what Jesus Christ did? He took the curse of man and became the cross for man. He took the curse of man and went on the cross for man. He's that one man who went on the cross to take away the, cru the, cru the curse. But life is so important. Your life counts. You know life, how much your life counts? Come on, babe. Tell us. Some of us don't believe our life matters. Come on, babe. I believe your life matters. But guess who believes that more? God believes your life matters. Yeah. Because when the sin happened in the world, you know what God said? Jesus is going to fix it. Yeah. Jesus is going to fix it. Jesus is gonna fix it after a while. After a while. He just needed a while to fix it. Is your life fixed today? Come on. The second point for you today is very simple. A life without accountability is a life that does not count. Wow. Most of us don't want accountability. Yeah. We don't want anyone, God, to look down upon us and say, hey, nah, not that way, uh, this way. But in your life, when I really count. You know, you know how I see your life? How I see my life? Our life is a canvas. You know what a canvas is? Yeah, painting. It's a white Come on. Come on. cloth, just ready to be painted. Mm. But some say, no, God cannot have that brush. <laughs> Some say, well, you can give me that brush, but you can only paint only once. Mm. After that, you gotta give me the brush back. <laughs> so Some say, you know what? True. No one tried that brush. 
and the brush and the canvas myself. Come on, Blue. Yeah. So I'm saying, man, and the canvas and the brush and the color and the painting also. No, don't, no, don't even come near me. Wow. So I'm saying, you know what? Even when you hang me up, I'm the place you I, I hang myself up wherever I want. That was me, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. Whatever Come color on. I want, I choose my color. You, no, 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 no one should tell me how my color should be. Wow. Yeah. But you know where the canvas comes from? The canvas never created itself. Come on. Come on. Someone had to bring that canvas and say, hey, this is your life. Yeah. By the way, I got the brush. Yeah. I got the colors. I got green, I got yellow, I got blue, I got yellow, and orange, pink. The sister's a little more pink there and purple. <laughs> but the brother's a little bit more, you know, blue, oh, gray, green, <laughs> brown, some manly colors. Oh, no. yeah. oh, I got all the colors you want. But there has to be accountability for that canvas that's given to you. Mm -hmm. Look 16, guys. Come on, bro. You know, we live in a society that's forgotten we belong to someone. Yeah. We belong to someone. Yeah. Because you wouldn't tell your dad that I don't belong to you, right? No one would say that. Your dad look at you and call you stupid. In Luke 16, in verse 1, it says, Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him and, and asked, what is it I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. Wow. You know, everyone will give an account when they die. Your life is a possession wow. that must be managed properly. Wow. You know, it, 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 <laughs> We live that in, we live a life like you know we live a life like no it's my life I made this life, but if there's no accountability, the cross won't count for you anymore. Mm. Wow. There's no accountability when you're in pain. Nothing will count for you. Come on, man. But you know what Jesus said to this man? This man, you know what this man did later on? In verse three, he says the man just said to himself, "What shall I do now? My master is taking away my job." And I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. And I know that, I would, that what I would do so that I would lose my job here, and people will, over, will welcome me into the houses. So he called in, in each of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. Manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450. The story goes on. At the end, it says in verse, in verse uh, in verse 15, he said to them, you are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your heart. Wow. What, people have, what people value highly is detestable in God's sight. Preach. And this man wanted to make a way for his life without the master. Mm. He was like, you know what? Maybe my master wants to take away my life. I'll find a way to work around it. Mm. I'll find a way to make me, I'll find a way. You might be playing tango with God. <laughs> I pray that you stop playing tango and surrender to him. Come on, come on, man. Think about the, the young lady today that my wife shared about. You know, when I heard that story, she said to me, like, there's someone I know, Merita, who has a date of death. You know, imagine I'm celebrating your, your date of death. Of death. Wow. You know, she, she, before, what she said earlier to me this week was like, you know what, my friend is a... Uh, Organizing a party to celebrate the death. Oh my goodness. And I, I made me think about, wow, how far have we fallen? Mm. Yeah. That your tax is used to kill someone. Yeah. You know you're paying tax for that? Yeah. Mm. You pay your tax money? You pay at the end of the month? Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the tax money? <laughs> <laughs> the tax you always send to the, to the, to the Belastin Beans? Exactly. It's actually yeah. going to the government to help people to kill themselves. Wow. Come on, tell me about that's how, that's, how, that's how far we've fallen. Mm. That the disciples' tax actually kills someone. Mm -hmm. My goodness. That's how, that's how terrible it is nowadays for us. Wow. Celebrating your date of death. In Dutch, they say, I just didn't see any way out anymore. I just. I just I just, I'm just gonna, I just gotta leave. You know how that's possible? Because of sin. Yeah. Because what really counts doesn't count anymore for people anymore. Yeah. What, what the cross does, 
what an empty tomb does. That tomb was emptied so that we can be full. Mm. Mm. That tomb was empty so that we didn't have to go in there anymore. And even when you go in there, you know it's just for temporary. <laughs> and you don't even need to pay for that. You don't even need to, there's no point to celebrate that death because it's like, guys, don't worry about me. I'll be back. I'll be back. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I'll be back. <laughs> We, we, we got to see that our society needs to see the empty of the I want to inspire you today. Your life counts. Yeah. Amen. Your life counts, man. Amen. You know why it counts? When Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Yeah. It's like, you want life? Don't worry, I'm the life you need. You want truth? Don't worry, I'm the truth you need. You want someone to love you? Don't worry, I'll love you. You want someone to take care of you? Don't worry, I'll care for you. I'm the one who really counts. Yeah. Because when I died, I didn't stay dead. I rose again. You know, we don't have a mental problem in this world. There's no mental problem. I have a sin problem. Yeah. So then I want to challenge you to just believe you count. If I told you today that God died for you, you, you should believe like, man, that should be probably true. The only reason you would even doubt that is because you have a sin problem. And the sin problem has changed your mind from seeing how much Christ loves you. So my last point for you guys today is a life that counts is a life that gives an account. Mm. Wow. A life that counts is a life that gives an account. Luke 17, in verse 11, guys. You know, it's so amazing that today, we're going to see someone who knows that our life counts. Yeah. Mm. And she's come to give an account today. Come on. Yeah. But let's read first before I tell you about this person. In Luke 17, in verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem. You know we're all the way to Jerusalem, man? Yeah. All the way to Jerusalem. That, that heavenly Jerusalem. Come on. You know, we're all on our way, but some of them want to go to Jerusalem. They want to go to hell. I pray you, you want to end up in Jerusalem, amen? Yeah. Amen. Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. This was the Samaritans and the Jews. As he was going to a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. You know what's going on with leprosy? It's a spiritual illness. Leprosy on the outside, your skin just looking terrible with sores everywhere, but you have spiritual leprosy nowadays. Yeah. Yes. Where we can also be lame ducks sitting in a place and not moving forward. Yeah. It says there, they stood at a distance, uh oh, distance, social distancing, <laughs> and called him out with a loud voice Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. You see, being a disciple is being cleansed as you go along. As you go along, you get cleansed. Because if you all got cleansed right away, like begin like, oh, I'm done, I'm perfect, you know what you would become? Conceited. <laughs> Super prideful, like, oh, I don't need anything anymore. No, it's like, don't worry, you're saved, but I'm going to cleanse you on the way. Amen. Mm -hmm. So true. One of them who, when, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he said he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Mm. Has no one returned to give praise to God? Or in other words, to give an account? Except for this foreigner. Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The church said, Amen. Amen. Today, guys, we have an amazing miracle happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. That it wasn't just men who was cleansed. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just Euclid who was cleansed. Come on, no. And our Renee was also cleansed. Anita was also cleansed. And they, 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 they came back. Yeah. And their faith made them well. But there were also some who were cleansed also. And that was Gabriella with the man. And today she's coming back to give an account to say praise God. On the way you get healed on the way, God is like, you know, I want to heal you, but you gotta stay faithful. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay me. But when you, oh, 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 that's not the right direction. Yeah, that's the wrong way. But thanks be to God. Amen. One day I got a call from Michael Whitmore. 
Come on, Mike. And Mike goes like, I, I, I just, we just finished staff that day. And we're, someone's looking at me, and we're like, about to have D-time that day. And, and, and we're like, someone's calling me. He's like, I don't know its number. <laughs> Pick it up, okay. <laughs> Hello? Tell me I'm speaking. Is this, uh, is this the evangelist of the church? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the church affiliated with Kip McKean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're the leader? Yeah? <laughs> What's up here? <laughs> so, bro, I want to speak to you about oh. all. <laughs> Bro, there's a brothership connection there, okay? And, and he told me that, I was like, bro, I'm struggling here, man. You know, oh. we need to, uh, yeah, we need to, we to right? I feel like God has been, you know, chasing me down. I, I just need to get into God's kingdom. I just to be wow. sure and like, you know, and, 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 and Michael and I, we had, a, we had a coffee the next day. We chatted, we, we got to know each other. We, 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 we dug into the scriptures with the brothers and his choice to get restored into the kingdom of God is now bearing fruit with his own wife wow. being restored wow. into the kingdom of God. Wow. And, and to see how God can bring about two amazing cranking disciples yeah. who are baptized into an amazing mission. Yeah. Yeah. Today, guys, we're going, we're going to see a miracle. Wow. Yeah. Because when, when Anita baptized Gabriella, yeah. she never knew what God would do today. Yeah. No. She never knew. That in from 1998 to where we are today, that Gabriella will be married to an amazing man. Yeah, come on, guys. And they'll be seeking to save the lost in Amsterdam. Yeah. Guys, yeah. do not underestimate what an empty tomb can do. Amen. Amen. It's not empty. No. It's working powerfully in yeah. people's lives. Yeah. But we're going to do something with that tomb, guys. Can we do something with that tomb? Yeah. Yes. I want to give you a challenge today. I want you to look like Luke. What does it mean? Come on, tell us. Luke chapter 1. Come on. I want you to look like Luke. In Luke 1, we see that there must be an account given. Gabriella is going to give an account today, like, you know what, guys, I'm getting restored. But she shouldn't be the only one. Arnold, you gotta give an account, bro. Come on, Arnold. Come on, Arnold. Oscar, you gotta give an account. Come on, Oscar. Yeah. Sandra, you gotta give an account. Come on, Sandra. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Solange, you gotta give an account. Come on, Solange. Come on. Come on. In Luke 1, it says, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us. Just as they were handed over down to us by those from the first were eyewitness. You know what eyewitness means in Greek? Intern. <laughs> what? Come on, Tom. And servants of the word. Come on, bro. <laughs> With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write and what? Orderly accounts for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Wow. You know what? You know what Luke was? Certainty. Luke was just a gentile like you. Yeah. And he's the most. Is the one who wrote most of the Gospels together with yeah. Paul. Yeah. Just like you. Writing accounts, the book of Acts. Working with Paul, whatever we're going to write down here. Letters to a different people. Because he looked into Jesus. And it's funny enough that his name is Luke. Looking into Jesus. <laughs> Look, I want to give you a challenge today, guys. We've got to become like Luke. Looking into Jesus. Yeah. We've got to dig deep to know who Christ is. Mm. We've got to dig deep because your faith depends on what you know. Mm. You will fall away if you don't know Christ so deeply. Yeah. Yeah. You will fall away. Ask some people around you today. Ask them. You will not be strong in your faith if you don't look like Luke into the scriptures. Yes, come on. To find out why I gotta know Christ more. We watched the movie Freedom Fridays mm -hmm. Thursday with, 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 with the students. Oh, and uh, I got a lot of, you know, Com comments from the disciples in the church. They were like, bro, are you so emotional? Come on. <laughs> you are. That's a big, come on. Man, you're just crying through the whole movie. It's like... <laughs> come on, bro. Come on, babe. I just want to cry. It's okay. <laughs> you can cry, though. Yeah. You 
Yeah. Come on, we're not, we're not crying through the whole movie. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You know, even, even guys who went out, even guys who went out, even those who went out there heard that I cried. I'm like, why do you guys didn't know I cried? They're like, wow. It's like, is there nothing in the church of God going on? Or are we just, you know, or are we giving accounts of uh, your evangelist crying? You know? But you know, I got a great, I got a great buddy crying. His name is Arnold. Come on, Arnold. Come on. Crying buddy sometimes. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, come on, I was like, bro, let's cry, cry all the way to heaven, bro. Come on, come on, come on, Arnold. Let's cry all the way to heaven. It's like, you know, 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 you Guys, we gotta look into Jesus yeah. because you know that book, that movie, Freedom Fighters, reminded me like, man, they were writing freedom for people. Mm. They were writing their stories. You know, your story matters a lot. Yeah. I want to challenge you to write your story down. Come on. Or film your story. Oh. Vlog your story. Mm. Blog your story. You have a story to tell. Amen. And that's, you have an account to give. Amen. That account is what will remind you of how faithful you should be, number one. And also will help others to be saved as well. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Become a freedom flogger. <laughs> Become a freedom writer. <laughs> Let us use our stories to help Amsterdam. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9.16, it says, Woe to me if I don't preach. Mm. Woe. Woe to me if I don't preach. Challenge is simple. Let's preach the word, guys, and to God be all the glory. Amen. Amen.